over here. All right, so I just I got started with this uh, just to save some time. I wanted to get the background on, but you can see I didn't get it quite finished. But um, this is an older design of mine. And I thought I'd revisit it. So that's what we're doing tonight. Hello, Sherry. Hi, Anna. Hi, Donna. So I'm Yvette from Old Times Paint Parties. And this is my CRTC segment, Craft Around the Clock segment. Um, the link for the Craft Around the Clock group is at the top. Hi, Carol. Um, if you want to go over there and join in on the fun on that page, the link is at the top. But I just thought I'd get started, just get right into it and get started so we can get this guy moving here. I'm just trying to get my background on so we can start painting out our gnome. How's everyone doing this evening? Hi, Miss Sharon. Hi, Cindy. I'm just kind of slapping this old black on right here in the background. <laughs> yeah, a little bit late tonight. Yeah. We can do it. I'm up late usually most nights anyway. <laughs> um, getting stuff done. The toils of working full time and doing this as well. And I don't know about you, but my house is quieter at night. So I don't usually um, have many interruptions when it's a little bit later. So I can get more done, if that makes sense. All right. So this is, uh, I, I call it a trick-or-treat gnome, but he's, um, he's actually like a candy corn, candy corn gnome. Um, and that's what he's gonna be when I get all of this there. But we'll just dry this background now. Yes, it's much better when it's quieter, Kelly. Yes, for sure. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Tracy. All right, so we'll just get this dry so I don't get my hands all up in it and I can see who's here. Oh, it's always a, a push to get things ready when you're 3 15 a.m. Carol, you're up. <laughs> you're shattered, but you can't sleep. Yes, insomnia is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, I'm glad you're here with us anyway, Carol. I hope we pass the time for you. Maybe I'll, you know, who knows? I'll bore you to death and you'll fall asleep. <laughs> just teasing <laughs> but you never know <laughs> all right I may have to touch this black up but we can do that after we get our gnome happening uh this is a ranger heat it tool uh Donna yes and it's nice and quiet I was very happy to get this one you can actually you know hear me talking over top of it so I can see lots of spots on my background where I need to touch up, but at least I have that first coat on there. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. All right, so I think we're pretty good there. So we're going to just start blocking in our gnome to look like some candy corn here. So I've got some jack-o'-lantern orange. Let's start with that. I'm going to move my plate over here. Grab a smaller round brush, perhaps. All right. I'm going to get in these tiny little spots in here. Concentrating hard here. All right. 
and then we can do this bigger spot up here with a bigger brush. So we're going to do this, no, this block with some orange here. Now this orange doesn't cover as well as some. So we'll probably have to do a couple of coats of this one. If you're a painter at all, you will know that orange and some yellows are not, some reds as well, they're a little bit transparent, so they take a little bit more to cover than others. I will be sharing the line drawing for this little guy as well. Like I said, he's one of my older designs. And I thought I had this line drawing posted from when I painted this a couple of years ago, but I couldn't find it on my own page. So um, I will repost it when we're finished here. Because I thought I was going to be all smart about it and find that and just say, oh, here's the link. No. It didn't work out that way, so I'll have to repost it. Who knows where that got lost in the Facebook world? Like I said, it was a couple of years ago, so dear knows where it went. I'm going to pop down to my smaller smaller brush for this because I'll just make a mess otherwise. All these little tiny areas. All right. Oh, your angel. Yes, I did notice you post that. And I'm going to use some marigold for the other couple spots here. So I think I'll do this big one up top first. Marigold is a lovely color. It has great coverage is one of the main reasons I like to use this yellow. See if I can get this side without having to turn my board close enough. Okay, and then we'll do this one down here. Thanks for the hearts. So he's starting to look like a candy corn. <laughs> All right, I will check your comments here in a second when I get, when I'm drying this in a second here. I'm trying to get this done as quick as possible so we can move on to the fun stuff. Get all these areas blocked in here.
I wasn't on last week. I can't even remember. I think I was, I can't remember what happened. I had to cancel out my CRTC spot and and it's weird, you know, when you don't come live for a bit, it's, you miss it. It's like I was so, I felt so out of touch for a, a whole week. Hard to get back in the groove once you have been away for a few days. Okay, so I'm going to grab this other little brush here and I have to get in this little curl on his beard here. All right, that's pretty good there. So yeah, he's starting to look like a candy corn. And I'm just going to grab some white. I know this is already white, but it's the canvas board and I just want to Put some paint on there as well. Oops, I have to fix my black now. Lordy, should get a bigger brush. That's probably my issue. Probably my issue. Let's try this one. And I think I should dry this quickly because I feel like I'm getting dangerously close to sticking my hands in that. So I'm just going to dry this quick and check your comments. All right, we're getting there. I think that's pretty good. So for his beard, I'm going to put some uh, slate gray down first. Before we start his hairs on his beard. This is just our base coat on our beard. So he will be based in here in a few minutes and then we can get started on adding some of his little shading and details. I'll grab a smaller brush to get that little curl on his beard at the bottom. Hi, Deborah from Texas. How are you tonight, Deborah? Okay. Hi, Jan. All right, I'm going to have to turn this just a little bit to reach so I don't get my hand into some of that paint. It's just easier and quicker to do it this way. So I'll just get this in here. Hopefully I don't make you dizzy. 
And I'll just grab a smaller brush and get that those little tinier pieces at the end. Down in here. And then we just have his nose to fill in. We have a little bit of touch up to do on our base coating on those yellow and orange spots on the candy corn. And then we're away. We're ready to do, do some shading. Make him look, come alive a little bit. All right. So our second coat usually will brighten things up a little bit. Sometimes that first coat is a little bit dull. We'll just quickly throw another one on there. And then we'll dry the whole thing. And you might not be able to see it on the camera. It, oh heavens. <laughs> um, see it on the camera, but it isn't quite bright enough with one coat. It might look like it is on screen, but it's really not. And I'll fix that little smudge on his beard now. He's got a little yellow on there. So I dropped my brush. That's what they call more hurry, less speed, I think. It's cold in 40s or 50s. Uh, I'm not even sure what the temp is here right now, but it's so damp and it's raining like crazy out right now. And I heard we had the four letter S word, <laughs> S-N-O-W. <laughs> I don't want to say the word out loud because I really don't, I'm not ready for it, but we do have it, I think, in the forecast for the next day or two. Whether it happens or not, I don't know, but... I'm not ready for it yet, but it's cold enough to do just that. I just, it's so crazy how fall just snuck up on us and I think we're going to like fly right into winter. Hi, Terry. And then we'll grab a little bit of this orange and we'll put some more on here and I think I'm only going to go with a couple coats of this just to, just for time's sake you know you can layer up orange forever sometimes it seems thank you for the sprinkles send some rain out west oh my goodness Deanna you can have it it's so cold here you haven't got any of that snow out there yet. Alberta usually gets it before we do. I haven't heard of anything yet. <laughs> and personally, they can keep it. They could have it all. <laughs> Don't like it. All right, and I'm just going to fix my little blooper there, and we'll put a little bit more orange on this little strip here for a time like we're doing pretty good, and then I'm just going to put a base on his nose, and then we'll dry this quickly.
Ooh, Sunday. No, I'm like I said, I'm just not ready. Where are you at, Diana? In the world. I know Minnesota got some snow already, but that's not surprising for that state. They are in quite a snow belt there. Again, they can keep it all. I'm just using a natural, I think it's called natural buff for his nose. All right, give this a quick dry. Oh, in Utah. And you're supposed to get snow, is that what you're telling me? Or rain? <laughs> well, that's not good, Deanna, for you guys. That just causes havoc with fires and things. Oh, snow. Okay, Diana. <laughs> yeah, it's it's looming over us, I'm afraid. And I'm just going to put some gray on here where I can see I missed. Board canvas. I'm just painting on a board canvas like a, and sometimes it's hard to get in those little grooves on the first coat. So you can usually find those quickly on the second coat and fill them in. I like to use these little board canvases from the dollar store for demos. But this one you could paint on, I think would be super cute, which is what I intended it for when I first painted it a few years ago. Um, on You could paint it on a little bag for a, as a trick-or-treat bag for your grandchildren, your children, whatever have you. Um, but I think it would be a cute little project even for the kids to paint on their, on their trick-or-treat bags. All right, I think we're ready for some shading. So um, on the orange, I think I better dry that orange part up there. I can see it's a little bit wet before I start shading. So I'm gonna use some burnt orange to base, or sorry, to shade these lighter orange colors. I don't like the cold either, Diana. It's not, I'm not a fan. And I, I'm born and raised here and I, you know, Canadians are supposed to like snow. I, I don't. It's not my most favorite season at all. Okay, so I'm going to, whoops, grab some burnt umber or burnt orange. Oh, I'm discombobulated. And my shader. I'm going to grab my water. And I'm just going to dip into my orange and work that in my brush. And we're just going to come along these bottom edges here. So this will clean up any of our, it'll start to make our base coating, coating look a little bit better. Basing is always kind of a bland sort of thing. And then the shading happens and then it starts to come alive a little bit. All right, so we'll get that part and then we'll move on down to the next orange section. Our time at All right. And we have these two little tiny spots in here. We may as well just grab those while we're here. And that'll finish that orange spot, those orange spots. 
and then I'll be shading the yellow ones. I think I'm going to use the lighter orange that I have here to shade the bottom edges of my yellow sections. So I think that was, I think it's jack-o'-lantern orange I used. And honestly, you can use any orange that you have um, for these candy corn sections. I'll put this lighter orange on and see if it works out for me. And if not, I'll use the burnt orange. It might not be dark enough, this, this jack-o'-lantern orange. I'm seeing that it might not be. Yeah, I'm not liking it so much. So I think I'm going to go right into my burnt orange and come along the bottom edge of that. And see that a little bit better. How many degrees was it this morning, Cindy? I don't think that went through. Oh, 10 degrees. Yeah. That's cold. <laughs> no, I am definitely not. I'm not up for it either. I'm just, just not. I'm going to put some up here too on this bottom top edge. Maybe I'll use some of that lighter stuff for down the sides here. Does anyone else just feel like I don't even know where fall went? It just seems like it it just blew by us. I don't know if that's you know as we get older the seasons just seem to go by quicker or what, but I'm. It's crazy how it's just gone. <laughs> we went right from summer to winter, it seemed. Thank you, Diana. All right, we're getting here. This guy doesn't take too long to paint up. And like I said, um, I think it would be a great one to share with the grandkids or your for kids, paint parties, whatever, on a uh, trick-or-treat bag would be fun to paint this guy. So we'll just let... This stuff dry a little bit. And we can start on his beard. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that shade orange, burnt orange on the bottom of his nose here. All right. And I'm going to just shade his beard a little bit so we know where the, um, I'm just going to grab my pencil. You could put your pattern back over there. I just kind of want to know where I'm headed here. Where his mustache went. That's, that's pretty good. Um, again, you could put your line drawing back over there and retrace those lines, but I'll just draw them on there. And I'm just going to take some black and define where his mustache goes. I fear it's going to be, you know, like you said, snow is coming too soon. And um, 
I can remember as a kid way back in the day, you know, this was a long time ago. <laughs> um, it's snowing like crazy on Halloween and out trick or treating in that mess and sleet and oh, it was awful. And I have a bad feeling that's what this year is going to bring for the trick or treaters. And it's kind of too bad because, you know, we're just getting out of COVID a little bit and every trick or treating starting again and all the fun stuff they like to do that they missed out on for the last couple of years. And then, uh, you know, hopefully the weather's not as miserable as I'm thinking it will be. I don't have any <clears throat> little kids anymore, so I don't have to do the trick or treat thing, but I can remember going out with my kids and it just be miserable. Not being, you know, can wait to get back home and get in where it was warm. Oh, it snowed in Pennsylvania. Yeah, so where it's looming. So I'm just going to come along the edge of his mustache here on the bottom edge. And then I'm going to use a break brush tonight for his beard. Um, it just is a little tool, and I'm not sure if you guys know what a rake brush is or if you used one before some of you may have it's just a neat little tool and it looks just like what it says a rake and i'll show it to you here in a second it's just another way to make hairs on beards or fur or hair for animals if you're painting those <clears throat> sorry for the flipping <clears throat> But it usually makes for a quick, quick way to make hair. So that's what we're going to try and use this evening. I'm just outlining these because with some shading, just because when you get the rake happening, you kind of want to see where the edges of your beard are underneath that hair that you're painting. So that's why I'm just kind of getting my black shading on there. So that's that. All right. I'm just going to dry this pretty quick. So you have one, Donna. Yes, your rake brush. So I'll show you what it looks like here while I'm drying. I did have it out here. There we go. So I use, what's this one? It is a Royal Aqualon Wisp Brush. That's what it's called. Royal Aqualon Wisp Brush. And I don't know if you guys, I have to like hold that up there. You can see that it literally looks like a little rake. And that's what we're going to do with this guy. So first of all, I want to just dry brush a little bit of this, these little sections before we put our beard on. So I'll do that first, first and foremost. So I'm just going to dry brush them with a little bit of white. So I'm just going to dip into there, grab my white on my, thanks for the sprinkle. And then I'm just going to literally pull some of that or rub some of that white right into these sections just to give it a little bit of texture. We'll get these little sections in here if we can. And then we'll go ahead and pull his beard in. And, you know, that's as simple as this is. It's a pretty quick little project. And I just, ha I have to touch up my background, but I'm not really worried about that on this live. I think you kind of got the idea. I can go back in and fix up my background later. Um, I can see a little bit of white peeking through there, which more or less just bugs me at the moment moment but i don't know that you can you can probably you know see it a little bit on camera too but we want to focus on the gnome himself but there so i just dry brush that a little bit and now i can grab my wisp brush so i haven't used mine in a little bit now i usually wet it and then just kind of condition it with some water but it's the tricky part of this wisp brush is you want to add, make sure that your paint 
is a little bit watered down because it kind of flows a little bit better off of this brush when the paint is a little bit inky, so to speak. So then I normally just test it on my plate and you, you can see there if it's going to do what it's supposed to do, then I can see my little sections there. So I kind of test it on my plate. So I'm just going to go ahead in here and you can see it's just going to pull in those strands so quickly. And then I'll just get my direction going here. And then you just reload as needed. And I'll get my direction of my hairs in place on the first pass. But if you don't have one of these little rake brushes, it's worth getting it if you're going to be painting gnomes or, you know, Santa beards or anything like that. They are definitely worth having. And you can get them on Amazon the last time I checked. And it's a Royal Aqualon Wisp Brush. If anyone who is watching is quick with the Amazon links and you want to throw one up there, I'm more than happy to let you do that. I'm good with that. It's just hard for me to do when I'm doing the actual live. So if someone's quick on the draw and wants to throw a link up there, sometimes you ladies help me out that way. I'm just going to bring this down here. Now I'm going to touch this up with a little bit um, with my fine liner as well, but this is just to get the main the main hairs on here, just because it's faster. And I think if you were doing this with the kids um, as a little fun project. These little wisp brush would be easy for them to use as well than painting out all those little hairs on the on the beard. I think it would be much easier for them to use this little rake. Okay, so there we have basically his, you know, the the first part of his beard. So I'm just going to dry that quick and then I'm just going to grab my liner brush and I'm going to zoom in. No, I can't zoom in. I'm on the wrong screen to zoom in, unfortunately. So we're almost done here. I'm just going to fix up his little beard. Now I do have on the uh, line drawing, it says, I do have lettering here that says trick or treat. I'm probably not going to get to that tonight. We'll see. Um, but you don't have to add the, let the words if you don't want to. I think he's pretty darn cute even without them. All right. So I'm just going to grab my liner brush. So you can, I'm just going to water down my white a little bit. I'm actually using a number one here. But you can come back in here and then just, you know, I'm going to grab a smaller one. I don't like this one. It's too, too long, wide. I'll grab my liner. So I think this is a 10 zero. And then I'm just going to grab some of these little wispies here and kind of pull them off the edge of the mustache and beard. So you can kind of just wisp them out there off the edge. Make his mustache and beard look a little more fuzzy. But I mean, you could line his mustache and beard in with a liner the whole way if you want to. Like I said, the rake just um, makes things a little bit quicker. 
and fills in that area faster. And then you can kind of just touch up the edges afterwards. So you can see the difference, hopefully. Hopefully you can see the difference. Let's bring him on up here since I don't have my zoom feature on. But you can see on the right side there how much different it looks when you just add those little extra wisps onto his mustache there. Just kind of changes the look altogether. And you can add some more like in here in different little directions to make it look a little bit more fuzzy as well. Uh, the size of this brush that I'm using right now, the liner brush is a 10-0. I often will use five zeros or 10 zeros for my lining. But again, that's all just personal preference. Whatever feels good in your hand and what you're used to using is fine. Hi, Miss Pat. How are you? Long time no talk. All right. Got a little thick in there, but I'm going to, it's okay. I'm going to go with it. And then you can do the same down here just kind of off the side just to give it a little bit of texture there a little bit of wisping off the edge and when you get down here to the curl you can kind of you know get a little fancy and bring it out a little bit get a little bit of wisp off the end on that curl is it, it might be a little bit hard to get in there with the rake brush on that tiny little spot down here so you can just do it with your liner brush. And I'll pull some off of this side. And then, like I said, you can come through here and, you know, pull some little random hairs through there if you want to, just to fill it in. Again, there's no rules, no rules in painting. And also I'm going to just maybe bring some of these little curls up here off of the ends, just to fancy that little wisp up there. Oh, thank you, Angie. All right. Okay, so I'm going to stop flipping and making you dizzy. I'm just going to put a little highlight here on his nose while I have my liner out. Oh, thank you, Angie. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do too, actually before I get all crazy with my dryer here, I'm going to put some little dots on. I think I'm going to add some white ones, not yellow. Just put some little dots on his brim here just to differentiate that it's his brim. Hat brim. And I'm just drying this quick because I want to just um, do one last thing before I sign off here. I got about a minute. So I just want to kind of shade a little bit around his nose to... Um, just to soften where we started with our rake brush because it can look a little messy right around where we start with the rake brush. So when you just add a little bit of extra shade there, I will show you what I mean. So we'll just grab our black on our shader just a tiny bit. And I'll just reshade just a little bit around his nose. And that just cleans up all of those little rough edges where we started with the rake brush and then you never notice them again. So that's it. I think he's pretty darn cute. Like I said, I will 
finish him and put the lettering on and um, I will post your line drawing and you guys can uh, it, it'll be a free line drawing so you can grab this and give this one a whirl hopefully before and you can also clean up those edges I know I'm still talking <laughs> clean up these edges in here too if there's any rough ones that are kind of out of place you can just kind of touch those up with your shading thank you susan thank you b all right so watch for um the line drawing i'll post that um in a bit here and uh, i hope you have fun painting your candy corn gnome all right see you guys we'll see you all next time